Yeah, hi, I'm Dr. Lee Toner. I'm an emergency physician here at Health Sciences North Emergency Department. I think most of us can probably figure out when we're feeling too warm. I think one of the things that we notice, probably that people tell us when they get really sick with heat, is they notice nausea, vomiting, uh, diarrhea. Um, they don't have an increased temperature yet, but they maybe feel lightheaded, they may have headaches, uh, they may get some swelling, they may get some rashes, they may feel faint. That sort of stuff tends to be the stuff that comes before the, the worst kind of heat illness that we see. I think when you're getting to the point where you're getting to the heat exhaustion stage, where your body is not able to keep up, you're still sweating, uh, but you're starting to lose some valuable electrolytes and you're starting to uh, not feel well, you're, you're, uh, you know, you're getting dehydrated and at that stage sometimes it's really hard to take care of yourself uh, and cool yourself down fast enough and that's where you need to be in the hospital and get some IV fluids sometimes and get cooled down quickly. And, and so I guess when the body gets heated it gets stressed and it needs to do a couple of things to try to get rid of heat and if it doesn't then it, it almost starts to cook itself. It starts to cook some of the enzymes that are critical in uh, a lot of the uh, reactions that have to go on in the body to digest food, to make energy, uh, to, clear, uh, to clear your blood of toxins and things like that. So when you have the extreme heats, then you're actually creating more toxins, you're actually creating a higher load on the heart, higher load on the liver, higher load on the kidney. So the kidney, despite not having you know, enough liquid to, to, uh, to keep hydrated, is having to do more work. When it's hot out, you want to make sure you, uh, you, know, you drink plenty of liquids, uh, preferably water, 100% fruit juice. Um, you want to avoid strenuous uh, activity at the, the hottest parts of the day, which normally run from about 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Um, you also want to keep an eye on, on other people uh, and know the high signs of, uh, of heat stroke or, or heat exhaustion. And if you see somebody who's starting to suffer them, such as headache or, uh, you know, the, the being thirsty or, or extremely thirsty, stopping sweating, that sort of thing, to get them someplace cool. Um, if you feel yourself uh, starting to become uncomfortable due to the heat, you want to get someplace cool, such so as a library, a mall, any place that's air conditioned. Um, if you're at home and you don't have air conditioning, um, items such as uh, using fans will at least move the air for you. Um, if you pull the, have the fan blowing over ice will actually help cool an area. Um, closing the blinds or curtains on the side facing the sun helps keep the sun out and, and the rooms cooler. A couple other items that we usually tell people, A, if you're going someplace in the car and you have children with you, obviously when you leave the car, the children leave the car. You don't leave them in behind whenever you've got uh, on a really hot day because the uh, temperature in the car will be higher, far hotter than it is actually outside. And the other thing is to check on your neighbors. If you have elderly neighbors um, so, or somebody who's more susceptible for something like heat, just check on them, um, you know, to make sure that they aren't, uh, aren't running into issues because when, when they do, they, they may not be able to or may not realize they need help.